This video is a quick tutorial on how to flash the firmware on the Kenwood TK380 handheld and the TK880 mobile radios. Um, the first thing you have to do is make sure that you've enabled firmware programming in your radio. And you do that by programming it into your data file that you're going to write to the, the uh, radio. Let me go ahead and open um, one of mine and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So come in here to your code plug and you go here to optional features and you go to optional features two tab. You have to have this box checked firmware programming. So make sure, first of all, that your code plug has that in there and then go ahead and, you know, update your data file and write it to your radio. And then um, I'm going to show you real quick on an 880 how you determine what actual version of the firmware you have. And to do that, you power on the radio while holding down the scan button. And um, let's see, I don't know if I'll be able to do this with one hand. Let me hold it and hit my... And you keep holding it down until your display will say PROG for programming mode. The numbers that are to the right of it are the actual baud rate, communication rate. And you'll want to jot that down because when you flash the firmware using the computer, you want to make sure that the, uh, the speed matches there. Okay, now once that's up, to determine what firmware version you have, you just press the monitor button once. Okay. It's going to say wait, and then it's going to show you the checksum of the current firmware hex file that's loaded on the radio. In this instance, um, this is a version 2 TK880. It actually says version 2.0 on the data plate. If your data plate doesn't have a version number, then it's a version 1. And the version 1 requires a different firmware. I'll show you that in just a second. So this one's current. If your checksum said anything different than that 0ADE, then it does not have the most current um, Kenwood firmware for these radios. Let me go ahead and shut this off. So to program the firmware, you need the hex files. Um, I can't re really remember where I got those from. I found them online and uh, it was pretty easy to find. But anybody who might be interested, um, if you provide me, um, you know, like an email address or something, I can email you a, a Dropbox link um, where you can download those. So what you want to do is after you've programmed your code plug to enable the firmware programming and you've checked your radio like I just showed you to determine that you don't actually have the latest firmware, what you need to do is, um, actually let me go to my computer. Pull up your my computer, go to your hard drive that the um, Kenwood software is installed on and should be under the program files, x86, it's 32-bit software. And then you want to navigate to the Kenwood FPU folder and the KPG49D folder. Now, I actually made this firmware folder to drop the firmware hex files in. I mean, I guess you could have them here on the root directory if you wanted. But uh, let me go ahead and open those. This first one here is the V1 firmware. And what you want is the actual hex file. Okay. And let me back up. Whoops. This V2 one here with the 0ADE checksum is for the V version 2.0 radios. And again, there's the hex file that you need. So once you've located where the hex files are, 
come back here to your KPG 49D folder and you wanna run this program, fpro.exe. And this is what it looks like. First thing you wanna do is check your COM port. I don't have a cable plugged in, but it would show it, um, you know, it wouldn't be subdued here and you wanna make sure, I'm just using this one arbitrarily, it could be any of these but you wanna make sure that it's selected by having a, um, a dot in that circle right there. And um, go ahead and click okay. Then you wanna come here and you wanna make sure that the baud rate matches what was on the radio, which this one does, and that you're using a USB cable. And this is where you select your uh, firmware file. Now it shows mine populated because I've done this several times, so it just automatically goes back there. So you may have to navigate, you know, back to that folder. Um, you know, let's say you're doing a V1 file, you know, you're gonna open up whatever folder you have it in or root directory that you have it in and select the, the hex file and then click open. And then um, you gotta get the radio into that programming mode again. So to, again, to do that, you hold down the scan button and power it on and keep holding it down until it says that. And once it's set to that, then you can go ahead and flash the firmware. So what you do is just, once you got your radio hooked up and in that programming mode, just click on right. And it'll take about, uh, maybe about a minute, maybe a little bit less than a minute. And your radio should make a beep sound and it will show that hex um, checksum value that zero ADE if it's a version 2.0 radio you know if you're if you're flashing this particular um, firmware and then you just simply you know cycle the power off and back on again and you're good to go and you can double check it you know like I showed you on the radio how to check um, you know powering it on holding down the scan button and then once it comes up and it says it's in the programming mode hit the monitor button it'll tell you that checksum again so you can double check it if you want and um, any code plug, uh, you know, any, any uh, data file that you have programmed in the radio already will still be there. The, uh, the uh, programming file, you know, for how, how you want your radio set up is unaffected by doing the uh, firmware update. It's a different bank of memory. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's worked like a champ for me. I've never had any issues. Um, I initially did have though, because it seemed like this was set at the highest rate and it didn't match my radio. And the first time I, I did it, it didn't take. And then I figured, you know, that, that part out. And then once I got it to match, it, it wrote it to it, no problem. So again, you just have to make sure you're using a version one firmware. If you have a version one radio, if you have a version two, then that zero ADE checksum hex file is the most current from Kenwood. And again, I found it online. Um, if I can figure out where that is, I'll post it down in the comments below a link to it. But um, as I said, if you if you put a comment on here and would like it and can figure out a way of getting me your email address, I don't know if that's allowed in the uh, uh, the YouTube or if you'd even want to. So let me, let me try to find those links for those and I'll see if I can include them below. All right, that's it, enjoy.